Hello guys. Uh, today, I want to talk about uh, a little something. And I, I think a lot of people have talked about it. A lot of people have, have, have different explanations. Uh, some of them are similar to the one that I have. Uh, but I want to just clarify for the guys that subscribe to me and, and watch my videos. And I want you know newcomers that are coming in that are trying to learn about uh, basics and techniques and things like that to help them, you know, on their on their way to hunting with a bow and arrow, long and long bow and recurves or whatever. Uh, today's video, uh, like the title says, is "What is your favorite color?" Um, this definitely applies to the color of fletching that you use. Okay. Um, there was, uh, you know, back when I, hundred years ago when I was in school, my physical, I mean my, uh, my, uh, yeah, physical science teacher uh, was a coach, and uh, one day he said something in class. Uh, we were discussing something, and uh, he said, and I stuck in my mind that, uh, you know, he asked asked the room, "What's your favorite color?" And, you know, everybody had different answers and stuff, you know, so he, and to make a long story short, he, he turned around and he pulled down a, a shade and he said, okay, there's a whole bunch of colors on here. Which one do you see first? Well, my eye immediately went to red and I had said red, you know, was my favorite color. He went on to explain that the majority of the time, not every single time, not, this is not, I don't know if this is science or if there's a proven fact or whatever, but if you think about it, your favorite color um, is the one that you see the best or the one you see first. Whenever you look at a look at a the landscape, uh, the first color that you see generally is your favorite color. It stands out more to you whenever you when you're looking at it. Okay, uh, like the front of the camp house here, it's kind of beige and brown it's got a sheet metal roof it's got the concrete's painted brown there's a black barbecue bit there's all kinds of stuff over there but the two pillars holding up the the porch they're powder coated red i didn't do that but when i look at that house the first thing that hits my eyesight is that those red pillars okay and it's been like that since i was a little kid i would see red like when you're looking for blood and stuff like that when I was very, very young, small guy, small kid, uh, from time to time, if we were looking for a deer, I could spot little teeny tiny spots of blood uh, with my young eyes. I could spot them just with my naked eye because it, it just stood out to me, okay? So, that brings me to what color fletching do you use? Do you use your favorite color? Should you use your favorite color? Is there any rule to what color you do use? And my question, my answer to all those questions for all the beginners out there is not necessarily. Um, G. Fred Asbell, everybody know, well, I say everybody, most people know who G. Fred Asbell is. Back in the 80s when it was kind of a, you know, up and coming thing with hunting videos and books and stuff, you know, Hunt, there's always been hunting books, but hunting videos and stuff like that. I heard him say, uh, and I don't remember what year it was, probably 1985 or something. Um, I heard him say, and I still remember him say, saying it, or I might have read it in one of his books or something. I don't remember. But anyway, I do remember the quote from him was, he sees red better than any other color. And that's why in a lot of his pictures of game he's taken and stuff like that, his arrows are fletched red. Okay. Now, with that thought in mind, for a lot of years, um, I had red arrows, I had red fletched arrows, and stuff like that. And definitely, uh, in the middle of the day or in the afternoon or whatever, when the sun's out and everything else, practicing with it, I could, man, I could zero in. I could see that fletching just like, you know, it was perfect. It was like a laser to me. Uh, gradually over time, uh, I realized early, early in the morning when there's not very much sunlight, late, late in the evening, you know, when the sun is just 
going down over there, uh, shooting an arrow in the woods or in the brush or in one of these areas like this, um, couldn't see it very well. Matter of fact, it would disappear a lot of times. And, I, you know, it just was kind of, it was hard for me to uh, adjust. So, um, and then on the other hand, uh, to me, there's nothing prettier than a, than a naturally barred feather on an arrow. I mean, a, a dozen of these arrows made up with, with naturally barred feather, natural barred feathers. Of course, they have artificial barred feathers too, just like this one. But a natural barred feather, there's nothing, there's nothing more pretty than, than, a, than a dozen of those. And a lot of people hunt with them. I've hunted with them. I've got dozens of arrows made up with them. But you put a white knock on there thinking, okay, well, I'll be able to see that knock. That's very true. If you're shooting, you know, out, out here in the field uh, during the middle of the day, stuff like that, you can follow that arrow pretty well uh, if you're really concentrating on your shot. But again, early, early morning, late, late evening, uh, it's kind of hard to follow that arrow. Matter of fact, it will disappear on you especially if you're shooting up into some brush, if there's an animal uh, up in there and you're trying to shoot through a hole or something to, to, to hit that animal, uh, you'll lose it. I mean, it, you, 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 it's, hard to, it's hard to keep it, you know, keep it in your eyesight. Um, so I just, I have some examples here. These are all out of different batches of arrows that I've made. Uh, this one is, a, like I said, an artificial barred feather. It's a little brighter than a, you know, a natural barred feather, but it's still hard to see, okay, in certain situations. Uh, here's one of my old red arrows. Uh, I got a blunt on it now, but, you know, it's red. It's got a little red, just a little bit of red cap dip, nothing fancy with artificial barred feathers on it. Love it. Love the way they shoot and everything else, but they're hard to follow whenever you're, you know, uh, in a hunting situation. Natural Bard again, I, you know, I've made up some of these and I, and I love them and I have a bunch of different sets for different occasions. Now, to me, in a hunting situation, this is more down the road you need to go. Or, in my opinion, this is down the road you need to go. Bright orange, white, yellow. Um, the, the neon colors, I, I don't have any of those. I, I think that, that almost looks too artificial to me for some reason. Just, it doesn't set, it doesn't do well in my eye. I just don't like to carry neon colors, but nothing wrong with them. I'm sure there's a lot of people hunt with them. Uh, this year uh, and most of last year, I've been going with, with the set that I made up that's, you know, cap dipped. I cap dip them and and this with yellow and with cap, yellow cap, yellow feathers, and yellow knock. Okay, it seems to me that even in low light conditions or whatever, uh, this is uh, this is this jumps out at me. I've shot these arrows into the woods and everything else. I've missed targets and stuff like that, and I can see it from 50 yards away, laying over there. And you know, of course, it's pretty sandy out here. We don't have like a lot of ground grass. We have a lot of cactus and brush and stuff like that. But if you shoot it out there in that brush uh, where there's not a lot of grass, you can see it for a long ways up in there. Um, I like yellow for, for sure. Uh, the orange like this, that really stands out to me. It really does. And I, and I, and I, would, I have and I do hunt with orange. Uh, I like it. It's a, it's a neat color. Uh, and also the yellow and the orange is also a pretty good safety factor. And when you got a back quiver on this full of arrows, uh, these are either yellow or orange. Uh, it's a, if you're hunting or went around other people or hunting where there's gun hunters or something like that, uh, surely they would know that there's nothing in the woods with yellow or orange on it other than a human. Uh, now this, I made up a dozen or I made a couple of dozen of these and I painted them, you know, white, clear coated them and they got white feathers and red. Now, this this combination of feathers right here with the white and the red, I see this really well. But if this had three red feathers on it, even with the shaft painted white, this arrow would disappear. 
you know, if it, if you got good aero flight, you, 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 it would disappear in low light conditions. Okay. I like them all, but especially when you're trying to work on your shot, your shot process and trying to look for aero flight problems and stuff like that. Three feathers, the same color, yellow, orange, white, uh, and white is even hard to see sometimes, uh, depending on the light conditions. Uh, but yellow and orange, those are pretty safe bets to, uh, you know, to, to uh, be able to trace your arrow with your eye during the shot. Now, uh, I know there's some people going to say, well, you got a back quiver full of yellow arrows, that sticks out like a sore thumb. Here's what I have found out unequivocally. It doesn't matter, okay? It does not matter if you have yellow or white or orange or whatever color feathers you have, pink, whatever color it is, it doesn't matter. Uh, these deer, I'll tell you down here in South Texas, just about anywhere, but especially down here in South Texas, these these animals down here, not the deer, the hogs, the, the turkeys, whatever down here, are very, very wide awake. And what I mean by that is, is everything down here is trying to get them. I mean, these deer, if a cricket jumps while they're feeding, I mean, they, they move. There's they're something, it, it alarms them, okay? I have found, and a lot of people, other, a lot of people, other people have figured this out too, a long time before me, a long time before I was even born, that the best camouflage known to man that has ever been invented is being still. I don't care if you paid a thousand dollars for your camouflage, whatever kind it is, if you're not being still and you got animals within 30 feet of you, 20 feet, 15 feet, 30 yards of you, they're going to find you. If you can't be still, I mean I've had deer within 20, 30 feet of me and that deer's looking straight at me. And if I'm looking down at the ground and not making direct eye contact with that animal and being perfectly still, dressed just like I am right now, but back up in the brush a little bit, I don't mean just standing right out in the wide open, but if you're sitting on a tripod and you're being perfectly still and you're kind of back up in that tree, if you don't move, you become inanimate to that animal. He's not gonna. He's not gonna see you. Now, the second you make direct eye contact with him and you blink your eyes, he will see that. He'll know. His sixth sense will tell him. As long as they don't wind you, as long as they don't get your your wind or smell you. If you're being still, the percentage of times that that animal will not will they'll sometimes take a second look at you or they you know they'll they'll realize something's not quite right but it doesn't bother them as much if you was to shrug your shoulder you're busted if you move your position or adjust your position at all in your chair and they see that they're gone they're gone but if you're being still just like these arrows i've had yellow white any kind of color you can imagine and most of the time, if I'm sitting in a tripod or, you know, up on a ladder stand or something like that, I generally take my quiver off and just hang it on the tree, you know. Um, as long as that quiver's not moving, and I'm just not flopping in a wind, uh, you're, you're good. You're, they're not, they're not going to see you. Again, the best camouflage in the world, bar none, is being still. So, don't worry so much about, now, if you have a bow mounted quiver okay uh, which I have some I have some I have one in the camp house in there right now it's a good one and I like hunting with it <clears throat> chances are when you the, the movement that you make it's just like having these arrows in my hand right here the movement that you make this right here part this part where all those arrows are hanging down will move and it's gonna move all right and that's just added to me that's just added movement that may not be necessary. More often than not, when I have my bow mounted quiver, when I get to the stand, I just take take the two rubber straps off and lay it beside me or hang it on a branch or something like that, just to avoid that. So anyway, this 
just a quick video about what, what your favorite color is. Um, and I suggest uh, a bright colored arrow, a yellow or white, orange, something like that. Uh, it will it will help you with your shooting, number one, because you can see arrow fight problems if you get a bad release or whatever. Uh, it'll help with that stuff. Uh, I do not recommend, never will recommend, black, uh, you know, olive green, <laughs> or some color like that, because when you shoot it, especially in the woods, it may look great in the backyard, but especially in the woods, uh, You know, you may even see that you hit the animal, but sometimes it it happens so fast when you shoot an animal, you don't know whether or not you got a good hit or not. So, highly recommend bright colored fletching, and uh, just wanted to pass that along about your favorite color. Uh, your favorite color may not necessarily be the color that you need to be shooting when you're fletching. So, anyway, hope this helps. Uh, guys, uh, you take care and shoot straight, and we'll see you on the next one.